um, in communication with each other again through electronic means and, and phone, etc. So um, I think it's fair to say that we we weren't um, short on on views from the public at any any point along this kind of journey that we've um, we've been on. Um, I think it's fair to say that one of the difficulties he had was a whole spectrum of of views as well um, on some big, I guess, big ticket um, issues such as transport movements in and out of Shetland, for example, where I guess we were, I guess, kind of challenged in in the in the sense that you couldn't achieve a consensus or discuss it in a in a forum that was um, helpful, um, I would suggest. Um, so again, there was probably a lot of kind of angst in, in the community as well um, around that. Uh, and I guess we couldn't really play a, an active role in that because as, as local government, we, we really didn't have any levers in that space either. Um, so again, a lot of it was probably um, became around defending positions as a, and explaining positions as opposed to, um, could I guess, working with the community to come up with solutions because we knew, I guess we knew that if there were solutions out there, we would probably have very little opportunity to actually enact them. And um, in, in terms of how that, I suppose, how that went down with community councils and other members of, of the public, were they understanding of, of the position or, or again is just the lack of being able to communicate with them effectively you know the, the issue there I think it's the the the, the inability to, to communicate was the was the, the challenge to have a, a forum um, to to do so um, and I guess going back to some members I think felt uncomfortable in that as well in terms of that role of, of trying to, to explain and um, the the decisions, P- particularly when they're perhaps not decisions that you would um, agree with. I think that's where where challenges um, came in. Um, and I would use the, the the ones around transport restrictions and testing, for example, on entry. There was a lot that was um, out there, and to be honest, there's still topics of conversation even even today. So it was in that space it became very very challenging. Um, but I guess. From our, or from my perspective, one of the, the I guess key challenges was to to maintain the I guess consistent um, message from a public health perspective. And well, personally, I, I didn't agree with quite a lot that was going on. Still, there was the importance of providing that kind of um, clear and consistent message and, and that leadership for, for the for the, I guess a community planning partnership as opposed to me as a as a politician challenging and scrutinising decisions that were made by um, by government or on that. So, and, and I suppose I'm I'm hearing there's an there's an element partly because of you know how local government sits in the um, you know within the spheres of spheres of government in in um, Scotland and, and the UK. Um, and the fact that we don't have um, as many powers as we might like um, at times, and I, I know you certainly feel that it's, it's very much the case in, in, in Shetland, and you shared that with your um, fellow um, fellow island councils. So, in, in a sense, there's a, that public scrutiny and transparency link, and picking up you feel is quite quite broken um, during this situation. Yeah, and I think. Um... I guess you'll probably be aware, I guess, subsequent to it, we've, we've kind of pushed in um, th- through the council um, exploration a, a greater self-determination as well. But, yeah, I think it's fair to say it was it was bubbling away um, under the surface, that frustration, um, before um, the pandemic hit. And, and I, I guess it, it brought it very much into to sharp focus uh, very, very early um, on in the in the pandemic. Um, and again, I guess we, again, I would reflect we, we probably in Shetland, um, adopted, um, greater restrictions earlier than we were told to do or advised to do, particularly around, um, community events, uh, because we had an initial spike and, and there was no guidance. But again, that demonstrated we took 
control at a, a very local level very early on in this in this process, and I have a great deal, degree of confidence in the community to do that. Um, again, when, it, when we got to the stage where there was less of a, a risk, then we we weren't allowed to, I guess, go the go the other way. Um, so yeah, a lot of the frustration I would suggest is around the the wider governance, not so much within Shetland Islands Council, but more so that yeah, that spheres of government it just it, it didn't work um, and still doesn't work. Is there anything in terms of then the um, the arrangements, the emergency decision making delegated authority? Um, is there any other points you would like to make about it that, that haven't been made so far? Um, no, I think that's I think that's largely um, yeah, la- yeah, largely largely covered. And I think without yeah yeah without probably repeating myself, a lot of it was just the yeah frustration with the. Yeah, um, National um, national decisions. But I'm, I'm, I would say I would pay credit to our staff for in their innovative ways of translating national directions to um, local circumstances. Because I think we had quite a lot of that um, at the early stages um, around, for example. Um, well, I mentioned transport. Another one was around emergency childcare provision, childcare hubs. Again, there was a, um, a national direction that, we, again, would suggest you open every school and have nobody in them, um, or you can go down our route and kind of create dedicated hubs. I think there was enough flexibility and, and flair um, demonstrated by our staff, which gave me a lot of kind of reassurance. Um, and I guess as members, we were, again, as a chairs group, Involved quite a bit in that in that conversation. Clearly, the decisions sat with the the officers, but um, but it was always um, kind of discussed with us as um, as a chairs group as well. So that kind of like kind of sounding board um, perspective, and that's I guess we were reflect trying to reflect the views of the, the wider community as well, being being closer closer to them. So no, I I think I think we covered um, covered that thought. I've actually just got one more one more question on that area. Stephen just came to me. Um, but there any decisions which had to be taken in which um, you know the chairs group as a whole um, would actually essentially disagreed with. Um, you know, but just officers had to had to go make ahead and make the decision that they thought was best. The the only it, it is not really the the chairs group. They are the one that really was challenging was around the fare collections on our ferries, around cash handling. Um, It's fair to say that there was um, some of our wider membership who would would sought to remove fare collection from ferries um, on the basis that it's cash and it's not safe, Um, which... um, which was challenging because I think some of the community, to be fair, were using that as an opportunity to get free travel. Um, because I guess we knew in the, and I guess having the conversations we did with the, uh, kind of the staff, the officers, the directors, we knew this situ- situation wasn't going to go away. So we had, as a chairs group, had held, held the line in support of the officers on that one, effectively continued to collect the fares. Um, on, on the ferry because the WHO said it was perfectly fine. Um, there was a wider messaging around more vulnerable individuals in, in shops if they're used to being um, going to the shops and using their cash. If we suddenly decided that ferry fare collection wasn't safe because cash is not safe, that could have created a whole range of vulnerabilities. So we could see the bigger bigger picture, but it's fair. And we had that discussion quite a bit, uh, um, but still we had members who were certainly did not agree with the decision to continue to collect that fares on the ferry with with cash. Um, it was ultimately the right decision because, again, the, the science hasn't changed and if we had removed the fares, we'd still be sitting with a situation with people travelling for free at the moment in time. 
at the same time as 